You're not only my son, you're my heir. You must not court unnecessary danger. Had you not been there, would this woman have found us? I'm glad you're safe. If you're not with the cult, how did you find this place? I followed a map from a temple. I was expecting ruins, not you or any of this. The cult. Why did they attack your son? I recognize their insignia. I know them as Trinity. I'm trying to stop them. Stop them from doing what? They're looking for an artifact. Uh, some sort of box connected to a moon goddess. Why do you want it? To steal it? Sell it? No. I just can't let Trinity, the cult, get to it first. They're too dangerous. Why? What have they done to you? They killed my father. Can I show you something? Do you know what this is? This is by Titi. You're already here. By Titi, the hidden city. But what's this eye? That is a place of death and sacrifice. And you think your artifact is there? Yes. No, none who has gone has ever returned. I'd be willing to try. You will risk it simply to stop the cult? Yes. Bring him in. Are you okay? Do you know this man? He's my best friend. Abby. If she's fine. Who else is looking for you? There's no one else. I believe we're seeking the same thing. We will bring you to the serpent with the silver eye, but we'll keep your friend here. You won't get very far if you're lying, and he will not be comfortable. You don't need to do that. It's, it's fine. I'll stay. Italy, get this woman some clothes. Would you keep him company? I'll be back as soon as I can. All right. Pretty nice place. Quiet. I apologize. As the rebel leader, I have to be careful. I am the rightful queen, Unuratu. Etsli, you still owe me a scouting report. Yes, Mom. Uh, there was one thing this morning. Yes? I saw Hakan debating with his neighbor. He seemed angry. As I came near, they suddenly stopped talking. Then they started laughing as if one had told a joke. He's planning something. Good work. Thank you, Mother. Hey, 
As you can see, secrets don't stay secret for very long in Paititi. If you were to deviate from the plan, you'd find out quickly. I see that. She's here to help me find something I lost. You don't have to worry about that. Was father a scout when he was my age? He was a hunter. Was he ferocious? He could be. But he was also very kind. Look around if you wish. I will be in the market across the river when you're ready to find the box of his shell. But I saw. He has them. Enough, Taki. You lost your dice. Fine. But don't lie about it. The cult is increasing its guard. Why? Because of the storms. What can a guard do for a storm? I'll explain later. I can see him. Even if no one else can. Are you okay? No. Pisco the dead took my dice. And no one believes me. But he took them. A dead man took your dice. Are you sure you didn't lose them? Hello. Ugh. You're as bad as the rest of them. I'm sorry. You're right. I'll tell you what. I'll pay very close attention, and if I see Pisco the dead, I'll ask for your dice back. Really? You believe me? It won't be the first time the dead seem to speak to me. Pisco the dead. You can see me? At last, Pisco is seen. Are you also dead, Ishiki? No. So you are Pisco the dead. I am Pisco, servant of the gods. I'm Lara. Lara. Nice name, Lara. You are not dead. Neither are you. Oh, but I am. As a child, I was to be sacrificed. I was brought to the mountain. The ritual was completed, but... But you survived. Only my body. I am dead to all my friends and family. I live by the offerings that are left for me. I met a boy who says Pisco stole his dice. Taki? He's the son of a very arrogant noble. He insisted we play a game. He lost. I don't have many things, but I won those dice fair and square. If you want, I'll play you for them. Do you want to play a game? What's the game? Talk to five people who have been cast out. Hear their wisdom and tell me why Taki lost, and I'll give you the dice. I can do that.
Hello. Hello, Ishiki. It's rare to see outsiders in the city. Pisco sent me to speak with you. Ah, Pisco. I like him. You've seen other outsiders? Only one. He was handsome, gentle, and kind. We were in love. But our love is forbidden. Outlawed by the cult of Kulkulkan. That's awful. I'm sorry. I was sentenced to death. Tied to the cliffs and left to die. On the third day, I welcomed death. That's when he found me. The outsider. He freed me and treated my wounds. Who was he? I don't know his name. It's been many years, but I still hope to see him again. I often return to the cliffs, near the condor nests and collect their feathers. They remind me of him. That's a remarkable story. Thank you for trusting me with it. Thank you for listening, Ishiki. They said I'm a liar and not to believe in. Hello? Peace goes at me. Ah, did he? Did you say you were cast out for lying? No, Ishiki. I was cast out for telling the truth. That was my mistake. What happened? Should I say I've never seen an outsider? If no one believes the truth, it never happened. What outsiders? They dress in black and have strange weapons. They hide gold. I told the cult about the gold and the outsiders. They cast me out for lying. Lying? The gold was for them. One day, the cult will be exposed for its hypocrisy. So what do you do now? I lost everything, Ishiki. My position, power, reputation. But it took me losing all that to finally see. I had no purpose, no calling. And you found one? Yes. I serve the future by protecting the past. Queen Unuratu's line are the rightful rulers of Paititi, not the cult of Kukulkan. Everything I see, everything I hear, everything I know, now helps the rebellion. A worthy cause. I send people to steal the gold shipments the outsiders deliver from time to time. They never change the drop-off point. Sounds like you're making a difference in a lot of people's lives. Thank you for sharing. It was nice talking with you. You too, Ishiki. Now I serve Ishel in a... Hello. Are you one of the outcasts? Yes, Ishiki. I'm Chaska. I'm Lara. Pisco sent me. Pisco the dead? Sent you to me? Did you lose a game of Patoli? No. A boy Taki lost his dice. I'm trying to win them back for him. Pisco wanted me to talk to all those who've been cast out before he gives them back to me. I'm surprised he didn't try to play you for them. He is. Ah, well, all I can tell you is this. Like Pisco, I was cast out. I lost my job and my position. But not because of an accident, because of something I did and would do again. What happened? Do you have any children? No. Neither do I. I did not receive the blessing of Ishel. But for my mistress, I was the midwife for her three children. I loved them like they were my own, until I lost my position. What did you do? I'm a thief, Lara.
what did you steal? A jade necklace. Why? The youngest, Kiara, she saw the necklace while visiting a friend. She took it. They were coming for her. They would have cast her out. She was an only child. I said I took it. My mistress took the necklace from me and threw it on the floor, breaking it. And cast me out instead. I'm so sorry. Don't be sad for me. I would do it again. Kiara's learned her lesson, and she has a good life. As for me, I serve Ishel now through my weaving, the way my mother taught me. And my Kiara comes to visit me sometimes. Thank you for sharing that, Chaska. Kiara was lucky to have you. Be well, Ishiki. Hello. Are you an outcast? Yes, Ishiki. Hello. I heard you talking about a white capybara. Oh, not just one. There are many of them. Pisco sent me to speak to all those who are cast out. You're a hunter. I am now. I was once a farmer, but... That wasn't a life for me. I felt trapped. Forced to live up to the duties and expectations brought down by my family. I finally refused and went my own way. And a white capybara was responsible? No, Ishigi. I heard of them. One night they assaulted my field. Trampled everything, but I did nothing to stop them. I just watched. They gave me an idea. A herd of this capybara, all white. What if I could hunt them? What if I could finally get away from the fields? So you did it? Best decision I ever made. My father disowned me, gave the farm to my sister, but that's fine with me. I'm a hunter now. They call me Paimo the White. <sighs> Thank you for the entertaining story, Paimo. Thank you, Ishiki. Come see what I have to trade. Hello. Hello. You're Lara, aren't you? Uh... Pisco sent you. He did. I'm Moreika. <laughs> that was the second time I heard your name today, Lara. The cultists are talking about you. You're the one who started the cleansing. The one who found the key of Shakshel. I am. Oh, don't feel bad, child. The cleansing was long overdue. It must be decided. Do we continue or begin again? That's not an easy decision. Did you hear that, Rimac? Deciding the fate of the world is not easy. <laughs> I like this one. You're right, Lara. It isn't. And if the cult of Kukulkan decides, they will enslave us all and call it protection. Won't they, Rimac? <laughs> he doesn't talk much. The cult is acting out of fear. Fear of what? Fear of the outside. Fear of change. But the same threats that are outside are in all of us. Fear is the enemy, not change. Change is the only constant. But look at me rambling on, Dreamac. The lady must want to buy something to help in her search. Hmm, good deal. Enjoy it. Thank you. Hmm, 
Good deal. Enjoy it. Good luck, Lara. What were you doing with your friends near the wilderness? Peace, Carl? You've already spoken to them, haven't you? I have. But you still don't see it. They all had hope. You need to do better than that if you want to win the game, Lara. Hope is one thing, but all those who have been cast out have thrived in their new lives despite their circumstances. Even you, Pisco. Well, I am the best Patoli player Paititi has ever known. <laughs> Not bad for a dead man. <laughs> Not bad at all. So again, what did you learn? I learned that sacrifice can make your life better. That you shouldn't be constrained by the legacy of your family. You can find your own path. Love is stronger than death, and you need to believe in something greater than yourself. But ultimately, you can't control everything. It's what you make of your situation that defines you. Well said, Lara. You're sure you're not dead? <laughs> Taki thinks he lost his dice because he was unlucky. But it's not the throw of the dice that wins the game. It's the skill of the player. I see that now. What did you think of Moreka, the outcast? She was expecting me. She seemed to know quite a bit about me. Ah, she knows a lot about everything, Ishiki. She has the most wondrous items in her shop. Artifacts known only to the gods. I saw. You were lucky you found her. She often travels outside of Paititi, gathering inventory. She seemed the most optimistic. Of course she is. We have a saying in Paititi. We all create destiny. We don't choose our circumstances, only our actions. A lesson my friend Taki needs to learn. Well played. Thank you, Pisco. I'll bring the dice back to Taki. I found your dice, Taki. Oh, thank you. 
Didn't you say Pisco stole your dice? Everyone knows Pisco steals. According to him, you wanted to play a game and you lost. He wouldn't let me play again. Just one more roll and I would have won. Pisco wanted you to know. It's not the throw of the dice that wins the game. It's the skill of the player. Now that I have my dice back, I can practice more. Thanks again, Ishiki. Location found. Hidden. Terrain difficult to traverse. Seems safe from the stranger's intent on forcing us into slavery. We found their hidden city easily enough, the coordinates from Trinity being correct. The natives did not trust us, and we entered the city with spears at our necks. There was a tumult against the people. We later learned a cohort of Inca had arrived the month before. Lopez spun a tale of our desertion from the Spanish army, for our hearts could not fathom the destruction they had and would continue to cause. And we gladly exchange any or all of our goods for shelter, if only for a short while. Reluctantly, they allowed us to remain in the city, on the condition we leave our armor and weapons in a small hut outside of the city proper. The men hesitated, and finally we agreed that two of us would remain outside, guarding the gear.
Any squad venturing outside Khan must take special precautions in covering their tracks. We're close now, and the last thing we need is droves of tourists showing up, trying to be the first to get the perfect selfies in the city. Beautiful. I don't recognize you. What are you doing here? Where did you get that tunic? It was given to me by Unuratu. Oh, you are the Queen's guest? I meant no offense. Please, you must forgive me. <laughs> it's all right. Don't worry. How may I help you? Here you go. Very good. Come back soon. All full up. Can't carry any more. This jade mask would have been placed on a noble's corpse during his funeral. The artisans were reputedly able to create an almost exact likeness of the wearer. The protectors failed and are now doomed to recover what they lost.
Sassen. It's Amna is the son of the Maya creator god, Hunabku. He was the god of education, responsible for inventing writing and books. This made him an essential figure in the development of Maya culture. He was also god of agriculture and created farming. He even presided over doctors, healing people with the help of his red-hot hand. Usually, it's Amna took on a reptilian aspect, but he was also known as Kinichahau, a fire McCall, who was the patron of the number four and controlled drought and disease. <laughs> Hmm. Can't figure out the dialect. I must be missing something. Thirtieth of November, sixteen o three. With a local man as a guide, Lopez, the soldiers, and I set out from the city before first light. Just as well as a terrible flu began to spread through the population, Lopez is convinced his artifact does not lie in the city itself, but somewhere just outside. I asked if it was not somewhat hypocritical to enlist the help of those loathsome people. Do not loathe them, he said, any more than you would these molasses. They are all creations of the Lord our God, as are we. I told him I was stunned to hear him speak in this fashion, but he took my hands and we prayed. The energy of his faith ran from him to me, until I felt the chains of doubt fall from my heart.
The new methods of agriculture introduced by the cult of Kukulkan have only succeeded in destroying more crops. First, the bee colonies collapsed. Then the cocoa crop failed. The earth is too damaged for anything but corn to grow, and the stalks are flimsy. We must take action, or Paititi will suffer a tremendous famine. This is a traditional foot plow, still used in the Andes today, even outside Paititi. Sometimes the simple ways are still the best. This Spanish document relates one of the many stories of El Dorado, the Golden One. When the first Spanish exploration ships returned home with their holds full of gold, the news spread like wildfire, and the stories got more extravagant with each retelling. Rumors of the Golden City gave birth to countless expeditions to the New World. Mesoamerican people used this stone as a tool for processing grain and seeds. This describes something nearby. A lone sentry stands guard over me and his harvest. Gotcha! Born to famine, raised in rebellion, orphaned but never alone, he rises as the sun. The Inca use a combination of freeze-drying and salt to preserve just about anything edible. Chalky and chunos are basically meat and potatoes. Delicious.
The pilgrimage came to a fork of two rivers and decided to settle. They erected two pyramids and began their new lives as protectors of the box. I don't have enough space for that.
As it was foretold, heralded by the column of flame burning through the night, and the destruction of our temples, and the warnings of the weeping woman and the two-headed man, the strange warriors astride great deer arrived with the rising sun. They murdered the weak leaders and claimed the land and the people as their own. <laughs> The people of the Andes have been perfecting the art of weaving for thousands of years. This chuspas is a wonderful example, woven of llama or alpaca hair and traditionally used to carry cocoa leaves. It clearly highlights the weaver's skill. Beautiful. It's a bit humbling to be here in Paititi. I didn't foresee any of this. I was expecting an ancient place, artifacts, tombs. I just failed to imagine people. I was so focused on the trail of clues, I didn't even stop to wonder. I didn't mean to interfere, but Trinity's here. The Aztec used these to burn incense so they could communicate with the gods. Still smells of copal.
The peak of this mountain is hidden behind thick clouds. I can't be sure what these two smaller hills on either side of the mountain are supposed to represent. How can these shapes be Incan when they look like airplanes? Oh, I see, they're insects of some sort. Archaeology is a very delicate field of study. You have to put yourself in the mindset of people and cultures who died centuries before you were even born. Humans interpret strange phenomena based on what they already know. If the Inca had seen planes, they might have assumed they were some sort of bird. Given that, these shapes may not be insects after all. Some of them look more like fish. Patoli is said to be one of the oldest games in America, played by all walks of life. Players were known to gamble all of their worldly possessions over a single round, from blankets and precious stones to their homes and even their family's freedom. The god of art and games, Makwal Shoktal, is considered an active participant in the game, responsible with bestowing offerings upon the winner. So much on the line for a simple game. Some things never do change. This describes something nearby. Canals bring water to the arid parts of the village, and they washed me away. All full up, can't carry any more. All full up, can't carry any more. I don't have enough space for that. Someone's taking this old walkie-talkie apart. Were they making an attempt at reverse engineering, I wonder? At last.
heavy-breasted woman wearing serpents around her waist. This is Kuatliku, whose name literally means skirt of snakes. She's also called Tetioinen, the mother of the gods. She gave birth to the moon and the stars and had over 400 children, including the sun god Witzli who was also god of war. In addition to being a mother, she's seen as the devourer of all that lives. It's said that she was herself sacrificed to bring about this current age of creation. This garishly decorated fire drill appears to be a part of the new fire ceremony, an Aztec celebration of the new year. It consists of five days of fasting, bloodletting, and sacrifice. The fire drill is meant to be placed upon the chest of the freshly sacrificed. It sparks, feeding a large bonfire that ignites the flames of every nearby temple. This one, however, doesn't appear to have been used, as the notches are clear of blood. This depicts the story of Viracocha, the father of all creation. He formed the heavens, the earth, the sun and stars, the moon, time itself and all living beings, including the other gods. At first, Viracocha was considered to be the supreme god of the Inca, but with time that honor passed to his son, Inti, the god of the sun. Still, Viracocha retained his link to the sea. His name literally means fat or foam of the sea. Unaratu approached the throne through the crowd. She walked beside it, but did not sit. Why do we continue to believe this lie? She asked the crowd. Kukul Khan controls this city, and I will no longer wear a smile and pretend it is any different. I will not be his puppet, trotted out to wave and smile. The guards cut her off quickly and ushered her away. Then they advanced, with weapons drawn to disperse the crowds.
villager claims to have seen a strange creature in the streets. They followed it to a walled-in alley where it disappeared. Citizen describes similar experience in Upper City, woke to discover something trying to climb in a second-story window. When she yelled, it dropped the street and disappeared. We'll continue to monitor.